These drugs have been here for longer than us. Mushrooms are way older and way more successful than we are. And we need to learn from them. My life before psychedelics, I can't really remember that. I'm an artist, uh, so drugs and art and the human mind are always topics that are very present in conversations. Um, but I was never a person who really uh, did psychedelic drugs too often. I remember there was a few times in uh, college and university where I had done MDMA, or at least what was called MDMA. And I remember thinking, doing it, being like, wow, that, that was such a great experience, and I would really love to keep doing that. Because of that feeling, I was always very nervous to get too down the rabbit hole. But they have always been sort of present in my life. I don't know about changed my entire life, but certainly changed my experience on psychedelic compounds and what they mean and uh, their ability to heal. You know what? I would say that the first time that I heard psychedelics could be used in a good way was really the legalization of marijuana in Canada. I remember that when weed was trying to be legalized in Canada, the argument for it was really a medical one. Yeah, so that was kind of the first time where I started to realize that drugs in general um, could be used for, um, for positive things and not just partying or not just um, kind of extracurricular activity, but rather like a real healing, uh, something that can heal. Through the filming of this documentary, um, we had met certain people in um, the drug kind of world. And through filming, I met this couple, and they're an elderly couple, and they talked about how MDMA changed their relationship. And immediately, I just gravitated towards these people. Um, the woman of the relationship is this just little bundle of uh, just joy. And immediately, I could tell that she was the real deal. So she said, hey, if you're ever in New York, hit us up. So when we were in New York for a film festival, we hit them up and we had planned to hang out with them. We went to Brooklyn and we met up with them and we had lunch with them and they were great. And I think we talked for a couple hours just talking about relationships and how we met and life and everything that, that you can imagine. And we just really loved them and, and trusted them. The man said, well, we have a little present for you guys. And I said, cool. And then they kind of put our hands and put uh, these capsules in our hands. So we go back to their house and me and my partner, we took the capsules and then we waited. And um, my partner had never done, um, had never done it before in her life. And so she was kind of nervous. And as uh, the feeling, the sensations were coming on, she started to get really nervous. And in fact, she actually went to the bathroom and threw up and she was she was sick and this happened several times and you know i was holding her hair as she threw up and then she's whispering to me like oh my god what have we done we're in here with these strange people what are we doing we don't know what we've taken and what we've done and i just said we just need to calm down we just need to chill out i trust these people implicitly and i don't think they would do anything to harm us and we can call an Uber and get out of here right now if we need to. And um, that kind of calmed her down and, and the drugs were sort of starting to take hold. And at which point the, the older man, the man who had given us the drugs, again, I'm going to leave his name out, but he came in and he just said to us, you guys stay in here and just talk to each other, just relate to each other and just, just, just vibe basically. And so we did, and we looked at each other, and we kissed each other, and we hugged each other, and at that point we knew that the drugs were definitely coming on. Then we started to 
head back to the couch. And so we sat down and we started talking. And the people who we were with had history in psychotherapy and, and psychoanalysis. Obviously, this was not an official context, but they began just asking us questions and writing down notes and um, starting and stopping the stories that we were telling and making us write down notes. And again, I thought this day was going to be hot and heavy sex day. And instead, what it turned into was a eight hour, nine hour therapy session. And I think the thing that was so great about it was because these were a couple of people who were older and whose relationship we really admired, we could really hear them. We could really hear what they were saying. It was the first time that we spent a day where we just got to um, analyze and unwind some of the things that we had wound up. And I'd never experienced a couples therapy in my life. Yeah, it was like before we even could check our watch, suddenly it was like two in the morning and it was like, oh my gosh, we got to like, <laughs> we got to think about leaving here or we got to figure out what we're doing. I remember leaving their house and then we got to the hotel room and we fell asleep and then we were up the next day and we were back in like the New York pace. We were like, wow, that was crazy. Da, 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 right back to it. And we got on a plane and we went somewhere else. And yeah, then we landed and my partner was completely like wiped, like could not move. And we found out that we had COVID. So then we had to really sit with each other because we were locked in together. And that's when I really started to um, integrate the experience. The moral of this story was for the preparation. My preparation was, I want to go. I want to go, go, go. I want to go see the city. I want to make love. I want to do this. And that didn't happen. Something else far more beautiful and far more um, meaningful to me happened. And it was because we didn't do the things that I wanted to do. Um, and then the second thing that I learned was that integration is extremely important. I thought the next day we just go back to our normal life and whatever, but actually the next day we needed to stop and think and we didn't do that. And we kind of, I think, not paid the price, but I think the universe just told us, hey, you got to sit and think about these things. And I actually think it took us like months to begin to integrate the experience. And I still think I'm trying to integrate the experience. I would say that in a clinical guided way that the power for change is, um, is unlike anything I've ever experienced. One, MDMA is uh, it's definitely a medicine and it's something that we need to decouple away from raves and rave culture. Um, I'm very curious what it would be like to go to an MDMA funeral or an MDMA wedding or an MDMA birthday party and how we could potentially change some of those events from being drinking events to being events where we really share how we feel about each other and and how we can connect. I thought what I needed was fun, hotel rooms, traveling around. And what I needed was to stop and listen and slow down. The last thing that I learned is that integration is everything. And when we talk about psychedelics, we need to be incredibly clear about what our plans are for integrating things. Um, yeah, that's the most important thing to me. Resources that I would advise people to use before they begin their psychedelic journey. Well, obviously, the Nakeen Foundation Storytelling Project to look at stories and see if it's right for you. It might not be. Um, 
But the hope is that when you hear people's stories you'll and see their faces, you'll see that there's all sorts of people that are doing this. So the thing that I would say is that there is a organization, um, I believe it's called Dance Safe, um, that provides testing kits. So to test all of your drugs multiple times, um, because sadly, drugs are still underground and underground means pollution and I don't want anyone to get sick or hurt or anything like that so to make sure that you're testing your drugs and getting them from a safe place and even if you're getting them from a safe place to test them the testing kits are relatively cheap and you know nothing's more expensive than your life so I think it's really worth it to test these things so I think know that Lots of people all over time, probably even your parents have done this and you don't need to be scared. Um, you just need to make sure that you're in the right headspace um, to do these things.